Do law firms even need an online presence? Hi, my name is Bill Rice. I'm with Kaleidico. We're a digital agency focused specifically on lead generation. Uh, And that's our topic this week on just sort of discussing the debate on whether or not a law firm even needs to uh, focus on or invest in their online presence. Believe it or not, uh, in in a day and age where everything seems to be focused on that mobile phone, uh, that screen in front of you, uh, whether you're walking down the street or you're at a restaurant, or unfortunately, as you're kind of looking next to the person commuting uh, with you on the way to work, uh, chances are uh, 80, 90% of those people that you look at are actually not looking at you or looking around in the world. They're actually focused in on that mobile phone. Um, But But at the same time, uh, most of the law firms that I talk to, uh, this is a question that they're still wrestling with. And so I get um, usually one or two uh, sort of different camps as I talk to a law firm for the first time. Uh, There is one perspective uh, that says, hey, I don't um, actually need uh, an online presence. All of my business uh, has traditionally and continues to come from referrals. Um, And this makes a lot of sense. Uh, Most law firms are actually uh, kind of a grouping together or partnering of individual attorneys that are doing a lot of networking, a lot of um, interactions with other professionals, building relationships, creating a referral network. Um, And uh, in most cases, most attorneys, uh, even today, get most of their case inquiries via um, a professional network and referrals. Um, But we're going to kind of talk about why um, digital online presence is probably still critical and essential uh, to that categories of lawyers. Then I get the second sort of encounter when people come to me uh, talking about digital marketing or or potentially a website redesign, and that is um, the attorneys or the firm that comes to me uh, kind of in an oh crap moment uh, because somebody or some competitor or some influence in the market has started to encroach on them and they're starting to feel the digital pressure, um, whether or not the actual firm or the attorney is doing a really good job and they're just simply showing up as these attorneys are kind of researching their own online presence or they're actually feeling the impact to their business because those uh, with strong online presence are actually taking those initial case inquiries away from the firm and the firm or the attorney is actually seeing a decline. So those are the two different perspectives um, that attorneys and law firms uh, come uh, at Kaleidico with. And I kind of want to talk through both of them because in both cases, um, I want to make to you a very strong case that digital online presence is essential in both of those scenarios. So let's talk about that in in depth. So uh, in both cases, it's important to just simply start with the facts. Um, according to multiple surveys out there, and you can you can Google uh, these surveys relatively quickly, there's been several conducted. Um, most of them are focused specifically inside of the legal industry, uh, and they've actually surveyed individuals who have uh, used and retained legal assistant. And those surveys in general show that 90 to 95 percent of those seeking legal assistance assistance um, uses the internet uh, is the first and the primary research tool to actually find uh, one, whether or not they have a, a case to be inquired about, um, any sort of information kind of legally to get them in context or understand the c- scenario or situation that they're in, and then ultimately uh, to research and determine uh, which attorney can potentially help them the best uh, in their uh, predicament. Then uh, on top of that, so everybody's starting there, uh, kind of the first fact is Everybody, 100%, uh, are very close to it uh, of the people that you're going to encounter, whether the referral or they're coming to to you directly through the internet channel, um, are going to come and check out your website, or at least they're going to attempt to, or they're going to go to the internet to start finding people like you. So that's the first fact that's important in this discussion. The second fact is that 70% of those folks 
um, said that they would prefer to actually read an article or, or watch a video or consume source, some sort of content uh, on a law firm site in order to kind of understand uh, them better uh, and potentially leads up to inquiring for their assistance over an advertisement. So they preferred content uh, and looking at that on the law firm site in order to kind of do that research and to, to do that, kind of get that comfort level um, over uh, just simply uh, an advertisement and kind of driving them straight to an action. So think billboards, think um, sort of even online advertising as well, but some of those traditional things um, that uh, attorneys uh, do in, in traditional marketing, advertising on TVs and billboards, those are the kind of things they're saying, hey, I don't really prefer that anymore. I want to sit down and actually look at some content the, that the attorneys have created, whether that be a video or written to help me kind of at my own pace understand more about the attorney uh, in my particular situation. Okay, so the next question is, uh, should we be focused on this to get our necessary online visibility? So hopefully uh, I've made a case that it's a priority. Um, and now the second thing we kind of need to do um, is to figure out like, what do we do uh, to start to get focused or to create this online visibility? So step one is to get super focused on your brand and identity. Um, the clarity uh, online is essential. Uh, so there's so much noise, there's so much distraction when you get online that it's really important to have a very specific and clear uh, description of what you do and the benefit or how you do it better than other attorneys. So taking some time, uh, even if you've done a lot of offline marketing or even maybe a little bit of digital marketing, stepping back and spending uh, at least an hour or so to kind of really re-go through your brand and identity and tighten that message down uh, as much as possible to create ultimate clarity. Because again, online, lots of distractions, just in the world in general, lots of distractions. So the clearer you can be with specific messaging uh, and, and kind of what that person needs to do as a next step is gonna be uh, super important. Um, the other thing, uh, and we see this again all the time, if, as you look at your website, uh, there's a chance if it's been around for a while, uh, one of two things have happened. One, you try to get everything on there, all your practice areas, all your attorneys, um, and you, you kind of push that all to the front because everything on your website has the same priority. So um, we're certainly saying you do want all your practice re practices represented, you want all your attorneys represented, uh, but you're gonna have to do some, some hierarchy and prioritization. You can't push all of it uh, to the top of the priority. And you see a lot of homepages that turn into that where everything on that page um, has the same level of priority. And it's just really overwhelming to a visitor, whether you're talking about a landing page, a blog article, or the homepage, again, there's a tendency for us to kind of shove everything to the front. So um, we're going to have to kind of tweak uh, and create some prioritization in there uh, and some clarity. Uh, so again, tune, iterate, and redesign uh, your website in order to show some clarity and some hierarchy um, to what they potentially need and to kind of get them uh, on the right path or journey as it applies to your website so that that clarity can start to have some depth. So we certainly don't want to take away the depth uh, of your website and of your message, uh, but we definitely um, do want to put some hierarchy behind it and create some paths and some journeys to go into that depth, not just hit them with it all at once. Um, kind of went into my third point there. Um, we want to give them the depth and that's what content does. So as we take them down these journeys, we want to give them the depth of content. Um, hopefully that can include video, um, but definitely the written word is so important and attorneys are really good at this. Uh, the only thing that I would caution here is there's a tendency because uh, one of the things that make you guys great attorneys is that you're so attuned to detail and specificity. Um, but on an online channel, again, uh, you've got to sort of boil some things down 
create some top level simplicity and some and some clarity of message and then take them uh, deeper. So don't don't um, be careful not to kind of go over their head. Again, we're just trying to get the inquiry uh, so that they can talk to you because you are the best uh, person uh, and, and that sort of one-on-one -on -one communication is going to be the best way for you to advise that individual on their individual situation. So you don't want to try to get everything into that article or everything into that video. You just kind of want to tease up uh, what your conversation will be uh, uh, like and give them confidence that they potentially have a case at hand and should contact you uh, for better uh, counsel. So that's um, number three. Number four, um, content uh, combined with AdWords uh, can help you start to take ground uh, in this highly competitive space. So I always think about online uh, searches in particular like real estate. Uh, you want to use a combined effect of the content uh, and then some paid Google AdWords to start to take in those little niche areas and get that traffic and get those inquiries coming into you directly. And that's a great way uh, to do that. So that's kind of the four step plan to starting to get uh, that online visibility. Um, and then finally, uh, let's speak a little bit more directly to the mythology of referrals. So no partner or client has ever um, sort of handed out a business card. Um, and I think I want you to really just kind of take a second and think about this. We've all got business cards, we hand them out. Uh, but when you're really thinking about the case and queries that you get and the people that you help every day, um, it's important for you to kind of get to a realization um, that there is a very low probability um, that that professional partner actually took your business card and handed it to that refer, the person that they're referring and said, hey, take this business card and call uh, whomever uh, is represented on that attorney. So you um, handing that business card and them calling you, it's probably not how it happens, right? Realistically, what happens is they're in a conversation and they say, hey, you should call Sue. She is the best at immigration. You should call uh, Bob. He helped you know, my cousin uh, in this truck accident. And being able to just have a conversation, they use a name, uh, usually a, an individual attorney name, uh, sometimes the firm, uh, and then what is the next action that happens, right? The person who was referred uh, goes to their mobile phone probably or their desktop uh, and they type in that name uh, and potentially add the firm to it. And so being able to collect um, those kind of searches are super important. So if you get most of your business from referrals, you still need to have a great online presence, particularly for the attorney's names. Most of our uh, legal clients, their actual website, the majority majority of their traffic actually does come from attorney names. So people typing in those attorney names, they're coming from referrals. But imagine for a moment, um, if someone uses your name and you don't rank on that first page, uh, you as an attorney, um, then they are not going to be able to find you. And they probably will not dig much deeper. The next search they'll do is a more generalized search to look for somebody to help them with the specific um, legal problem that they have. And guess what? That's gonna lead them away from you. So if you don't have a strong online presence and most of your business is from referrals, you will probably see yourself losing uh, business as uh, the internet and just kind of our linkage to our mobile phones gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, people are just not handing physical paths to you, um, they're actually using the search engine to go after that. Um, so that's one important reason. So, um, so I would encourage you uh, specifically to go ahead and kind of think through that process and take a look. Go ahead and Google your no name, figure out where you're at, Google your law firm, figure out where you're at, um, and then of course you can always add to that the particular legal issue. So we see a lot of those kind of searches too. They'll search for Bill Rice and then they'll search for truck accident um, because again, that's the problem. So they'll put those things together. So go ahead and do a couple of those searches and see if your online presence is holding up. Um, and then the other thing um, that I think is really important, and this is why the way we kind of structure uh, individual attorney pages when we're designing these, is when they do come into that individual attorney page or that law firm page, 
the law firm page kind of goes without saying, but even in the individual attorney page, it's important to list the different practice areas um, that you are involved with so that they can, again, see their particular issue and potentially go deeper by clicking on that. So that's super important. And then at the very top, um, where it's kind of presenting you as an attorney, maybe even before your CV and your practice areas, uh, we wanna make sure that it's really easy to find your contact information because again, most likely, especially if you're getting most of your business from referrals, um, that first search is simply to find your contact information because your professional partner uh, probably didn't take the time to dig into uh, his or her own contact database and give them your phone number or your email. So it's really important to have that uh, at the very top. So um, hopefully um, that will kind of give you some as you kind of do that own, your own research there um, will potentially either give you some confidence or angst uh, in your positioning with your online presence. Again, um, whether you're being impacted by a competitor uh, that's really getting good at this, um, or you just um, uh, under the assumption that all of your business comes from referrals and they don't touch the website, um, hopefully you've considered everything that I've said um, because this is something that's going to become more and more important. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, this is something that we do each and every week. So I would encourage you, uh, if you enjoyed this, to uh, please like the video because that helps us uh, in a big, big way uh, to get this information out to more people. Uh, but we'd also love for you to subscribe um, so that you each and every week are getting all of our kind of new tips uh, about digital marketing and how you can apply that to your business uh, to grow your practice area. Also, I uh, encourage you to hit the little bell that will show up after you subscribe. If you hit that bell, you'll actually get a notification every single time that I go live or we release a new video. So hope to see you next time. Again, hope this is helpful. In uh, below this video in the comments uh, here on YouTube, I am very, very active. So if you have a very specific question, um, I would love to have you drop that in the comments and I will go in there um, and actively give you the most detailed and specific answer that I possibly can. So with all that, hope to see you next time. Enjoy.